Welcome to the AusAsia Business Program with your host, Stacey Martin. Stacey brings together experts, ideas, and information on how to navigate business opportunities in Asia. Hao. Welcome to the AusAsia Business Program. I'm Stacey Martin and in the studio today I have Rachel Marr. Rachel is the CEO of AusAsia Training Institute, a boutique firm providing culturally focused business strategies, communication and risk control skills. Welcome to the show, Rachel. Thank you very much, Stacey. I'm delighted to be invited here today. Oh, fantastic. Rachel, you were born in Malaysia and like many came to Australia as an international student. Tell us about those early days. Oh, uh, that was memorable and yet scary. <laughs> when I first landed in Melbourne, it was my first trip out of Malaysia, first international student trip uh, to study uh, accounting major, to right. be in a chartered accountant. And I was invited by a lovely Australian family couple as my new foster family uh, for dinner. So I was excited. I said, what can I bring? They said, just bring a plate. <laughs> the old Aussie bring a plate, yeah. I go silent for a second and say okay without asking why bring yeah, a yeah, plate yeah. because i haven't met other australian families and i thought maybe it's their way of being nice and accommodating uh -huh. and i was too shy to ask why because in the malaysian a chinese culture it's rude to question your elders okay. and they were in their 60s and i was just 18 so <laughs> what i did was bridge the two cultures we asians and malaysia bring a gifts when we are invited for yep, the first yep. dinner so i brought a big plate empty plate <laughs> uh, to please my foster family and i uh, brought a box of beautiful lint chocolates uh, for dessert onto the plate when i arrived for dinner they said why did you bring an empty plate <laughs> I thought you're going to bring your fried noodles or fried rice, Malaysian nasi goreng. And I said, no, it's for the, my chocolate so that you can have dessert. Just to cover my embarrassment, not understanding the so Aussie the culture. culture. It's not just that kind of experience. You, you saw lots of um, different cultural aspects um, coming from a, another country. Tell us a little bit about some of the other things in terms of going through your studies and you know starting out in business. I did learn quite a fair bit when I was an undergraduate student in the good Australian culture. Uh, however, when I was posted to do my roles in the different Australian companies, mm -hmm. after coming back from Malaysia as a chartered accountant, I was sent to Indonesia, Mal um, Singapore, Thailand, Philippines, you name it, and across Japan and China, and they were all different cultures. So lots to adapt to. I had culture, sure. <laughs> being a Western educated Aussie graduate yeah. and, and being working in multinationals, um, so I was very westernized and yeah, Western yeah. Malaysian. And I learned a lot of tips and tricks. I made some mistakes and blunders. And understanding the culture and mindset uh, was brilliant because uh, by adapting to their culture and the, the way they operate in business, I managed to do a lot of things very smoothly and achieve high outcomes. So it's, it's really that acute awareness. And then you realize that uh, other people needed help in this area, hence the business uh, consulting uh, that you are operating today. Yes. And let me share with you, uh, the culture in Thailand in China could be very different from Japan or Indonesia and the etiquette both in the social and uh, business aspects are also very different. That's a lot to adapt and knowing not just the culture in fact there are other tips and tricks on uh, what is the context of money in the western and asian culture too but before doing business um, for many of those asian cultures comes building a relationship doesn't it very true you are spot on stacy it's not just about transactions and buying and selling it's about the quancy the relationships yep. and the quancy in china could be different from thailand different from vietnam different from malaysia singapore and there are little nuances that you need to overcome or cross the bridge. As I've gone into some of these countries, I haven't, you know, on reflection, been as prepared as I could. Uh, my regular trips are to China. So when I went on a business mission to Vietnam, 
last year, the best thing I did was just, you know, translate my business cards and my collateral. So our tour host thought I must be all over the culture. But it was more that I had this awareness that things would be different and trying to sort of follow the lead. But I guess what your business does is make sure people are well prepared before they get on the ground. Yes, uh, a bit of uh, an introduction to them if they are brand new. Example, recruitment in Asia, is uh, it might sound the same process, but it's slightly different. Depending on the culture and background, for example, I would like to share with you what is the secret of money in terms of uh, the Asian context versus right. the Western context. M stands for the mindset, which is their thinking and behaviors are different. Yes. And it's very different in Japan, China, Vietnam, etc. And O is for the origin. What kind of beliefs and customs do you... Like, for instance, Chinese New Year, you don't bring a watch as a gift oh or no. a clock as a gift, yep. sending them away forever. So eight's a very lucky number, four's yes, not, yes. all those kind of things. And yep. it depends on the culture. Four is lucky for the Indians. Oh, is that right? Yes. So I mentioned about M is mindset, uh, O is origin, the culture and customs, N is for their uh, numbers, financials. Okay. What kind of value would they get out of your business, doing yep, business yep. with you? And then E is for the experience. Every, all your customers, business partners, and even your teams within the organization would value the experience that you give them or you work with them. And therefore, it's with your partners, business partners, clients, uh, your organizational teams, right from leadership to the reception staff. The experience is good. Yep, yep. You will get a better outcome. And why is the yield, which is the ROI, return on investment, the benefits, and what's in it for them. So if you get this money concept right, you hit the gold mine. And, and look, you're absolutely right because it's about adapting. Uh, relationships, very, very important. Hierarchy, face, all those things, which, as you say, are different in different countries. So it's really um, people getting a, a good understanding of how they should behave in another country, how to transact and negotiate. I mean, negotiation's a really big thing, isn't it? Fantastic. You hit the nail on the head, Stacey. Negotiation is very different. If you are in um, talking about selling a, a partnership in joint venture, due to hierarchy, you may get a long waiting time to get approvals because they have to go through the manager, the director, the senior director, and the chairman, yeah, and the vice yeah, chairman. Yeah. So I had some clients who uh, engaged me for in-house group executive workshops, and we go through the nuances of different cultures in different Asian complex uh, environment. Then there are other clients who say, I want to recruit people from Asia, based in Asia, but I've never dealt with how they handle recruitment. Is it the same as us? We, are, we do a test, we do a IQ test, and we do some several interviews. I said, no, it depends on each culture. Yes, yes. Some of them is by relationships, yeah. by referrals. You've got to know someone. And that's why it's so hard for someone to go in country and say, hey, I just want to recruit someone because there's not a big recruitment market like we have here. It's, it's, it's knowing someone, isn't it? Yes. And then, I mean, countries like Japan, where they've been long-term workers, you know, what happens if they go for an uh, interview discussion, don't get the job? It's not just that you know someone. Of course, you need the credibility, you need the skills, you need some experience. Or if you're brand new graduate is who's who in the network oh yes yes absolutely will you look after my uh, son or daughter doing business uh, in another country it's not just the complexity like we're doing business here there's a whole lot of other layers and some of them that you don't even you don't even yes. know about yet and yeah? it's the verbal non-verbal cues that you pick up in different mm -hmm. cultures and I learned those tips and tricks which I am passionate to share with all the SME businesses who are aspiring to grow their business or to enhance their business uh, both locally in Australia as well as across Asia. Rachel Ma, we've been listening to uh, from AusAsia Training and after the break we'll hear a little bit more from Rachel about how you can manage some of the risks when doing business in Asia. AusAsia is taking a short break. If you'd like to sponsor this show or be part of Eagle Waves Radio, go to our website, eaglewavesradio.com.au and contact us.
Hey Tess, don't you employ overseas staff and you've been thinking about expanding your business offshore? Yeah, I have been. And you have investors that are also considering moving to Australia. I do. So a registered migration agent could probably help you with the right visa solution. But how do you find the right one? Industry Body Migration Alliance has over 4,800 registered agents. What's the best way to contact them? Email help at migrationalliance.com.au and you'll find Amara registered agent right near you. Cool. And now back to you, Stacey. I'm here in the studio with Rachel Ma from China Oz Asia Training Services. So, Rachel, you've worked with a range of uh, businesses. Where do they typically go wrong when looking to do business in Asia? And what can they do to mitigate risk and reduce the likelihood of expensive mistakes? Fantastic questions. Um, some of my clients um, have either established businesses in Australia right. or they are trying to establish new business partnerships in different parts of Asia. Because it's important to have a partner, isn't it? Someone that they yes, have on the ground. Yes, someone on the ground would be preferred method. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, uh, you might have a bit of cost flying in and out and uh, not knowing the local culture and how And do we, how does one find a business partner? As part of my uh, extended services, I have my Aus Asia Bridges. Yep. where I provide consultancy and we have certain trade matching processes okay. a few times a year uh, to, bring a, to bring together like-minded business owners who may want to uh, import, export either products and services. And, and you know, finding a business partner, you know, once you've found them, you, you know, and some of them say, hey, I want an exclusive arrangement and you don't know who they are. It's not like you can just kind of look up the ASIC register or just, you know, Google because, you know, it's a whole different system, isn't it? Correct. And following on from uh, my money metaphor where uh, business is not just about rules and mm-hmm. regulations and compliance but it's also embedded in the cultures and the way they work uh, in business so uh, some of the SMEs have gone wrong and where I have helped them back on, to, on track uh, into a business risk uh, governance and ethical environment uh, one of the r- uh, mistakes they have made is a lack of understanding of specific Asian market they assume that one Asian market is the same as other because they are all look Asian they look right. the same <laughs> <laughs> and then they may be selecting incorrect people within their roles in the company. You don't select the top salespeople. You actually select the top relationship management yes, experts yes, yes. Uh, to build that cross-culture relationships. And that's where I come in as an advisor uh, on a consulting basis for a certain period of time. Another mistake they make is they are very inflexible in the negotiation techniques and approaches. We are not talking about fixed prices. We are talking about packages and bonuses and value-added outcomes that the client or your business partner can receive mutually from you and and you with them. Therefore, um, there is a range. I know in the Western world, we like fixed prices. However, in the Asian world, there is a lot of bargaining, whether you like it or not. Oh, look, and I've experienced that myself, particularly in markets. And often there's a different price for a local versus a, a, a foreigner. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Tell you a very thing, uh, a very good business associate. Um, he was buying uh, shopping in, example, China, and he had to pay $800, whereas when I bought for him, it was only $80. Oh, my goodness, yeah. And yes. look, we, we don't know, so it's always good. Again, back to having a local uh, with yes. you for that experience. But, you know, you've worked with not just corporates and SMEs, you've also supported some government initiatives, haven't you? Yes, yes. Uh, some of the city councils, I have run workshops for them right. uh, in recent times, and they were uh, wanting to close deals more than $500 million. And yes, they... Uh, we had a workshop and we included interactive lunch and dining etiquette too. Okay. And not only they have learned a lot, they had fun, but they say, oh my God, was that why I burned my first <laughs> fi- $500 million deal? deal you should yeah. have come in last year, not oh. now. Let's uh, talk more and how to engage you, Rachel, so that we can uh, do more advisory and make put us on the right track. Subsequently, they did change their business plan and strategies and I'm so happy for them. That's my reward. Yeah, my reward yeah. is not just running workshops and advisory. My reward is helping businesses grow and protect their bottom lines too because there are lots of business risk mitigation and one of the potential is cyber security and information security awareness programs 
to mitigate fraud losses and other business losses. And and of course, you know, if things do go pear shaped, you know, what jurisdiction is that discussion in? But obviously, better to manage things through uh, relationship base and really know the players, how they interact. As you say, going up the hierarchy. Uh, prevention is always better than <laughs> cure. Uh, it's just like you going to the d- surgery. Before you go to the surgery, you would like to have preventative medicine and uh, remedies before you really go under the knife. <laughs> Speaking of which, healthcare is a really big growth area. I mean, Asia's got some quite strong advancements and we do as well. So again, that collaboration, you've got tourism, mm. education, a whole lot of things opening up and you work across all the sectors. I mean, it's common problems, right? Yes, yes. And I also have uh, Asian business uh, migrants and partners are asking about understanding good Aussie culture <laughs> and uh, good bis- SME business owners, including financial planning, brokering, properties, education and healthcare, aged care. So it's a mutual uh, win-win uh, to let them understand our good Aussie cultures and we help them to bridge the gaps of understanding. Uh, it's not just having money, it's about uh, having the right contacts and the right people to support you. They say, where do I park my money? Where do I invest? Yeah, yeah. Et cetera. And, and that comes back to trust. If they're going to deal with someone they don't know, they want to have that introduction and that confidence that you, mm. that you have in them. It's quite interesting having worked in large organisations people don't necessarily want to say I don't know what I'm doing we've got Asian staff we've got it all sorted but as you say a lot of the Asian staff have had a Western education yes. and perhaps haven't been in business they've been obviously growing up in China or Singapore or Malaysia but but not necessarily the business so this is where it's really important to get the advice correct correct language may be a little challenge to overcome when you work with Asia but uh, it's not just a language, it's a, a whole lot of uh, different uh, tools, techniques and strategies to be manage business risk and as well as running a profitable business. And um, in terms of going forward in some of the industries you've worked with, where do you see SMEs being able to take advantage? You know, certain sectors or services to those sectors. What what do you think are the the real sort of big winners um, going forward? Oh, well, uh, the middle income are getting wealthier and wealthier. Yep, yep. Uh, the middle income now, for instance, just in China alone is growing uh, in leaps and bounds from 350 million to uh, more than 750 million in the next five to 10 years. So if you want to su- uh, support them, uh, the major areas would be education, yep. training and coaching, uh, financial planning, properties, Aged care, health care, these are the major sectors and tourism, of course. You mentioned financial services, uh, which is my background. So increasingly, the world is global. People are looking for global opportunities. Property, obviously, is a, a big sector. Many people are attracted to the bricks and mortar, as we are here, and looking to uh, whether it's developments. Uh, Australia needs capital. Obviously, Uh, we've always been an importer of capital. We just don't have enough people. So, you know, investing in our businesses here, whether it's agriculture, property or other services and the opportunity to collaborate. I mean, I really see an opportunity where, you know, Australia's got world class uh, financial services, very much client focused. Um, And there's a huge amount of wealth in some of these um, countries with um, progress they've had over the last uh, decade or so. In China's case, 30 years for many of these countries. You know, they've had a very big opening up. So wealth is um, growing and they're needing a whole range of different services. Correct. Uh, However, uh, they need to tap the people who live, breathe and practice cross-cultural business skills as well as cross-cultural experience, um, not just books and theories. Yeah, and certainly when I found dealing with my first few uh, Chinese clients looking at investor migration, even working with our uh, Asian team, there was so much I learned. I'm pretty sure I burnt a few deals early on. (laughs) Whilst we're in a highly compliant environment, you can't just do things the way you did them. And as you mentioned before, building the bridge. So we have to be a bit flexible. They have to be a bit flexible and try and find some common ground. But uh, I think part of it is self-awareness. You need to know how you do things before you can sort of realise how you adjust that to others. So I presume there's some of the things you would cover in sort of your workshops or briefing people before they go into a deal situation? Yes, I've covered in both the advisory uh, services uh, as well as the workshops and it's all customised to align with individual clients' perspectives. Which is fantastic to, to, to really understand what they're trying to achieve. Yes, helping them to achieve their expected outcomes. 
problems. It's not about me. It's about helping the, my clients. So that's the focus and the vision and the mission. Fantastic, Rachel. Just tell tell our listeners again about this sort of money metaphor concept. Okay, if you want the top five tips, uh, my secret uh, metaphor yeah. is money. Money in the Eastern and Western context is different. M stands for mindset, which is thinking and behaviors are different. Uh, o is uh, stand for origin, which is customs, cultures, beliefs. Numbers stands for financials, values, and bonuses. Yep. What kind of bonuses Outcome, would they yeah. get out of the program and uh, experiences? Everybody wants customer experience to be good. Yes, of course. So that they can refer you wholeheartedly, endlessly. Uh, and that's one of the benefits, isn't it? The yes. referrals. Yeah. So uh, your experience with your customers, with your business partners, and teams within your organization. The last one, but not the least, is yield. What kind of ROI, return on investment? What kind of benefits do your clients get, and do you get? It's a mutual win-win. So the metaphor is money. What is the difference between the Western and Eastern mindset about the money metaphor? That's fantastic. So uh, I'm Stacey Martin, host of the Oz Asia Business Program, and today you've been listening to Rachel Ma from Oz Asia Training Institute, uh, helping build a bridge between uh, Eastern and Western culture to have a more profitable experience with your uh, interactions with Asia. So, Shashé, Rachel, thank you very much, Stacey. Please Zai- contact me if you need a free consult. Fantastic, and uh, you can get those details on our website. Uh, so, Zaijian to our listeners. Zaijian. Thank you for listening to the Oz Asia Business Program with our host Stacy Martin, our Asian business specialist and expat financial advisor. Powered by Eagle Waves Radio and broadcasting proudly from Vivo Cafe, Sydney. Mm-hmm.